Welcome to God's Playbook with your host, Father Rico Passero. It's a 20, 10, 5, touchdown! Touchdown! Let's play ball. Friends, welcome back to God's Playbook. We have our final part of the series on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Today we talk about the gift of fortitude. When we look at fortitude, defined by St. Thomas Aquinas, he says that fortitude denotes a firmness of mind in doing good and in avoiding evil, particularly when it is difficult or dangerous to do so, and the confidence to overcome all obstacles, even deadly ones, by virtue of the assurance of everlasting life. Again, he says that fortitude denotes a firmness of mind in doing good and in avoiding evil, particularly when it is difficult or dangerous to do so, and the confidence to overcome all obstacles, even deadly ones, by virtue of the assurance of everlasting life. So when we look at his definition, we can use the martyrs as a perfect example of people who exhibited the gift of fortitude. In other words, they were willing to be tortured and die for their faith. You might ask yourself, is that something I necessarily have to do? They may not be volunteering to be martyred for the faith, nor may I necessarily be volunteering. And yet, This is exactly what these saints have shown us in a very extreme way. Let's ask ourselves the questions, how can we model the gift of fortitude in our daily life? Well, I think the key here is knowing the difference between doing good and avoiding evil. How can we do good and avoid evil, especially when it's difficult? It can be so easy for us to choose the easy path. The easy path usually leads to something that is not necessarily good. It's the harder path that leads to holiness and goodness. It's easy to just lash back. It's harder to bite our tongue. It's easier to refuse forgiveness. It's harder to forgive. It's easier to just yell at somebody. It's harder to think of a positive quality about them if they've just hurt our feelings. These are tangible ways in which we can live fortitude. I know in my life, I need to focus on this gift much more. Perhaps you might agree. I need to ask God to give me the strength to endure to recognize what I should do and have the strength and endurance to actually do it. How can each of us in our lives ask the Holy Spirit to help us with this gift of fortitude? Is there a dilemma right now that you are facing, knowing that you should be doing something that perhaps you may be reluctant to do? Is there something that God has put on your heart? For some of us, we may be reluctant to do it. And yet when we do do it, we can always be assured that God takes delight in us. But this unwillingness or reluctance at times is the devil trying to tempt us to move us off the path of fortitude which focuses on what God expects us to do and to choose the easier path. But as Jesus says, the path to heaven is through the eye of the needle and getting the camel through the eye of the needle. The path to heaven is the narrow door and he is the gate. So when we are struggling with something from a moral perspective, we should always ask ourselves, well, what would Jesus do in this situation? How has he given us the church to help us to know what we should do in a particular situation, even if it's difficult to do so? Can we have the fortitude to stand up for our faith when others may laugh at us? Why do you go to church for? 
I'm a good person. I don't need to pray. I don't need to go to church. I don't go to confession. I just say sorry to God in prayer. These are all ways in which people are perhaps confusing the truth to realize that indeed fortitude tells us that we should not only stand up for our faith, but seek ways to lead others to do the same. To express our value of God, and again, to know the difference between right and wrong and be willing to focus on what is right. Even those of us like myself who frequent the sacrament of confession, it shouldn't just be, well, I'll just do this for now and go to confession later and ask for God's mercy. We actually need to be willing to actually avoid evil at all costs and to seek what is true and righteous and good and holy, for that is what helps us in our relationship with God and our path to seek true joy and happiness, fulfillment in our lives. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Friends, I look forward to tomorrow's podcast, which will begin a mini-series on the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Now focusing on the gifts, and we look forward to the fruits. How can each one of us grow in our relationship with God? For God's Playbook friends, I'm Father Rico. God loves you, and so do I. If you like what you hear, please consider supporting us using any of our affiliate links in the description below via Budsprout, Ko-Fi, or GoFundMe. Thanks, and God bless.